There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son, precious Lamb of God, Messiah, Holy. Jehovah Mashiapona. As we minister before you today, we pray that you have mercy upon us. Forgive our sins, you Lord. Forgive our trespasses. Have mercy upon us, you Lord. And the Father, we pray that this fellowship shall not be like any other fellowship, but this fellowship is the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Jehovah reign. We pray that every person that will come to this service we meet you, Lord, at the points of their knees in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray for the sick and we command a healing in the name of Jesus. We pray for them that have no hope. Let them meet the hope of Jesus Christ in their hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. And them that are not born again, Jehovah, we pray that they are going to meet with your salvation. Receive all the glory and the praises. In Jesus' name, we do pray and believe. Amen. Clap for Jesus.
So teach my song to rise to you. When temptation comes my way, and I cannot stand, I fall on you. Jesus, you're my hope and stay. So teach my song. Oh, 
our hands together and praise our good God. Kindly greet your neighbor, Karibishe. Welcome them in the house of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's go. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Makofi, 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 somebody clap for Jesus. Hallelujah. I didn't know you would favor me this way. I didn't know you would favor me this way, Lord. I didn't know you favor me this way. Favor me this way. Thank you, Jesus, we say. I didn't know you would favor me this way. 
ma fe no no ti Jesus te va a llevar allá o pa pa ta allá o pa pa ta allá o pa pa ta allá o pa pa this morning. So I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. My name is Jacob Mwangi. Jesus Christ is Lord and Savior in my life. I'm delighted this morning to welcome you on behalf of pastor and the leadership of the church. I welcome you here physically and also online, on, online wherever you are watching from or, or you are listening from. I welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made we will rejoice and be glad in it. There is no doubt about it. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. No doubt about it. Hallelujah. Clap for Jesus. Amen. So I welcome uh, Pastor Mary to come and share the word of God. Let's clap, uh, clap for her in the name of Jesus Christ. Karibu sana. Amen. Let's stand as we... I commit her to the Lord. Our Father, we know that you love us. You love us so much that you gave your only son, Jesus Christ, to come and die for us, oh God. We were lost one time, but because of your son, Jesus Christ, who died and rose on the third day, and today is on your right hand. Today we can say that the Lord we have hope because of your grace, because of your mercy, receive all the glory and the praises. As your servant ministers today, Lord, be with your heart to the glory and honor of your name. Help each one of us, our Father, that you, Lord, we welcome your word in our hearts, in our minds, in our everything to the glory and honor of your name. We thank you and we worship you. In the mighty name of Jesus, we do pray and believe. Amen. Clap for Jesus. Karibu Pastor. mic test. Thank you. Please help me appreciate Jesus once more. In the name of Jesus. I greet you in the name of Jesus, church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. This morning I'm born again. I love Jesus. He's my Lord and Savior, and I'm glad to be in him. I also want to thank God because of each one of you. We love you, church. And I want to want you to know that you are always in our prayers. We love you and may the Lord bless you so much. Thank you so much, Bishop, for being with us. I'm glad to see you in this service. Feel welcome. And may the Lord bless us all as church and the church said, Amen. I'm privileged to share the word of God this morning and I'm speaking about Jesus knows and he understands. I'm reminding us that Jesus knows and he understands. And so he's in a position to help us because he knows and he understands. Kindly let's open our Bibles in the book of Luke, chapter 4. We will read verse 1 and 2. The book of Luke, chapter 4. We will read verse 1 
in two. Luke chapter 4, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit in the desert, where for 40 days he was tempted by the devil. He ate nothing during those days, and at the end of them he was hungry. The Lord bless his word. In the previous verses, that is chapter 3, verse 21 and 22, we read of Jesus' baptism by John the Baptist. And when he went out of the water, the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And now where we've read chapter 4, verse 1, we've read that Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, was led by the Spirit in the desert. This was not only a lonely place, but it was also a place where he encountered the enemy. He encountered the enemy of his mission on earth. He encountered the enemy of his destiny. We know that all along Satan tried to eliminate Jesus. And we also remember that he killed so many baby boys through King Herod in search for Jesus. And so in this desert, Jesus encountered a ruthless enemy full of hatred for God and his people. And you know, the enemy did not come to Jesus when he was beginning to pray. He did not come at the beginning of the fast. The enemy waited until when Jesus was so hungry and exhausted because this is the kind of the enemy who chooses his time to attack so well. And many times he attacks us when we are vulnerable. That time when we are at the top of our lives, when things are working well for us, that is the time he will come and try to make us fall or tempt us fall into the sin of pride. Because he knows that it was pride that completely separated him from God. The enemy also attacks us when we are at the bottom of our lives. That time when we feel so low and so discouraged because of the many troubles that we go through. He comes during this time and repeats his old question. You know the question he asked Eve in the Garden of Eden that is recorded in Genesis 3 verse 1. Did God really say he comes to us when we are down, when we are discouraged. And he comes to us with this question. Did God really say that he loves you? If he does, why is he not sending you help now that you need it so much? Did God really say that he cares for you? If yes, why is, is he not helping him, you now that you are going through these struggles? And the enemy will work hard to sow the seeds of doubt in us. And you know where there is doubt, there is no faith. And without faith, we cannot please God. And so Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, was led by the Spirit in the desert, where he encountered the enemy of his mission, the enemy of his destiny. And church, at times we are tempted to think that when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, that he will always make us lie down green pastures, in green pastures, and lead us besides quiet waters. And sometimes the Spirit does that. But there are other times when he leads us into the desert. There are other times when he fills us and he leads us in the desert, where we encounter an enemy who tries to bring us down through unbelief and discouragements. It is during these times that our faith is tested to prove whether it is genuine. To prove whether we can continue to trust in God's goodness even when we don't understand him. 
There are times in life when we don't understand God. And during these times, our faith is being tested to prove whether we can continue to stand firm and continue loving God and continue trusting that he's there for us even when we don't understand him. It is said, faith that is not tested cannot be trusted. And the Apostle Peter says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6, that we go through trials of many kind so that our faith, which is of greater worth than gold, may be proved genuine and may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Jesus will highly honor genuine faith in this life and the life to come. And I believe this is why he asked this question in the book of Luke chapter 18, verse 8. Jesus asked, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Will he find people holding firm to the faith they profess, believing that God is still good and trustworthy, even in our difficult moments? Will Jesus find faith on earth? when he comes back? Will Jesus find faith in you when he comes back? And back to our text, Luke chapter 4, we read that Jesus, full of the Holy Spirit, was led by the Spirit in the wilderness where he encountered the devil, where he was tempted by the devil. And so I ask, why was it necessary for Jesus to be, to be tempted? Why was it necessary for him to go through temptations? There are many reasons, but the first and the biggest one is so that he can identify with us when we go through temptations. Jesus was tempted so that he can identify with us when we go through temptations. Because Jesus knows what it means to be lonely in a desert where no one comes to encourage you despite what you are passing through. Where no one even calls to find out how you are faring on. Jesus knows what it means to be lonely. And so we don't need to speak to him in vocabularies, you know, big words to tell him that we are lonely. He understands. He knows what it means to be lonely. Jesus knows what it means to be hungry. He knows what it means to be in want. He knows what it means to be broke. And so we don't need to speak to Jesus in Greek language, you know, in a complicated language to tell him that we are in need you know, by speaking to him in simple, simple words and in our mother tongue, Jesus understands what it means to be in want. He understands what it means to be broke. Jesus knows what it means to have an enemy nearby. That person who hates you without cause. That person who gets mad when your business thrives that person who gets envious of your children because they are on the path of success, that person who always works for your downfall without any reason. And so, when we are pursued by an enemy, we don't need to speak to Jesus word by word, you know, through very calculated words to tell us that we have an enemy of our souls. We have an enemy of our peace. We have an enemy of our joy. We have an enemy of our progress. Jesus knows and he understands what it means to have an enemy nearby. He knows when we tell him that our lives are at threat, he understands what that means. And Jesus went through temptations so that he can feel what we feel when we are tempted because he also shared 
in our humanity. Jesus shared in our humanity so that he can feel what we feel. And I request that we read these words uh, in the book of Hebrews 2 in this regard. Hebrews 2, kindly give us Hebrews 2. We will read verse 14 and 16. Jesus shared in our humanity so that he can understand what we feel. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity so that by his death he might break the power of him who holds the power of death, that is, the devil. And free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For sure, it is not angels he helps, but Abraham's descendants. Thank you. We are told that for him to defeat the enemy, for Jesus to defeat the enemy, he had to put on flesh and blood. He had to become like us so that he can understand what we humans go through in this life. And this means that angels cannot understand us. They don't have flesh and blood. Angels will never and cannot understand us. If you tell an angel that you are hungry, that is foreign to him. Angels don't know what it means to go hungry. If you tell an angel that you are passing through temptations, he might even ask you, but why? Why are you going through temptations? Because angels don't understand they don't know what it means to go through temptations. And that's why God could not have sent an angel to die for us. Because angels do not know what it feels to be separated from God. They are always in the presence of God. They don't know what it feels to be separated from God. But Jesus had to come down and put on flesh and blood so that he could identify with Abraham's descendants. And the Bible also says something that I want us to read, the same Hebrews chapter 4. Kindly give us Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14 and 16. Chapter 4, verse 14 and 16, the book of Hebrews. Therefore, since we have a great high priest, who has gone through heaven, through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but we have one who has been tempted in every way just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Amen. The Bible says that Jesus is our high, is our great high priest and that he was tempted in all ways just as we are tempted but was without sin. Jesus knows our weaknesses. He understands our weaknesses. He knows the many times that we try to rise you know, and become more like him but he finds us mostly and most times struggling still with the old self. And that's why the Bible says in Hebrews 7 verse 25 that he always lives to intercede for us. He tells the Father, I know what they are going through. Just strengthen them. Give them more grace. Pour your masses upon them, Father. I know what they are made of. I remember their form. I understand their struggles. Jesus is the best suited to plead our case before the Father because he knows us. He knows what we go through. He understands what we go through. He went through what we are going through today. He understands what you are going through even this morning. He's the best suited to speak before the Father in regards to to what you are going through. And in verse 16, we are told to approach the throne of grace with the confidence so that we can receive mercy and find grace to help us in our times of need. Mercy has been defined as not receiving the punishment that we deserve. Mercy has been defined 
as not receiving the punishment that we deserve. Grace has been defined as receiving favor that we do not deserve. Receiving favor that we do not deserve. And therefore we are told to approach the throne of grace with confidence so that the punishment that we deserve can be taken away from us and instead receive God's favor that we do not deserve. Praise the Lord. And the throne of grace is the throne of God. The throne of grace is the throne of God. This is where God sits in his holiness, majesty, and splendor. This is where he sits surrounded with great glory and awesome power. And this is the throne we are told to approach with confidence so that we may receive grace and mercy to help us in our times of need. And you know, we do not approach this throne on our own. It is not who we are. It is not about who we are. We don't approach the holiness of God in our names. We don't approach the throne of God because of what we have. It is not about our merit. It is not about what we have or what we don't have. It is not about of who we are. It is not about of what people say about us. We can only approach the throne of God, the presence of God, in the name of Jesus, who is our Savior and Redeemer. Jesus, who has gone ahead of us, breaking every barrier that separated us from the Father by his blood. It is only by the blood of Jesus in, in, in his name that we can approach the throne of God. He destroyed everything that stood between us and God by his blood. And this is the very blood that speaks better words about us than the blood of Abel. And this morning, church, I desire that we approach this throne of grace with confidence. I don't know what you are passing through this morning. But we have been given right. All of us who have put our trust in Jesus, we have been given the right to approach the throne of God with confidence, making our request known to the Father, letting him know what we are going through and telling him what our prayer this morning is. And because we are going there in the name of Jesus, the Father is pleased to grant our request. The, the Father is pleased to hear our prayer. The Father is pleased to grant our request. You know, Jesus does not only empathize with us. He does not only sympathize with us. Jesus is also able to lift us from any kind of pit that we could find ourselves in this morning. He's the only one who knows and understands us and best suited to help us in our needs. And that is what I want us to do this morning, church. Kindly let's stand. Let's stand before the Father because we have been given the right to approach the throne of God with the confidence. Jesus is our merciful high priest. He understands you this morning. When you tell him what you are going through, even in your mother tongue, Jesus knows and he understands and he's able to help us. I want us to go before the Lord and worship the Father because of giving us Jesus. It is love that moved God to send Jesus to us so that everyone who believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And let us also worship Jesus through whom we can approach the throne of God. It is on his account that our sins are forgiven. It is because of Jesus that the Father can listen to us. It is because of Jesus that our prayers are heard and answered. It is because of Jesus that we can receive mercy this morning. It is because of Jesus that we can receive God's favor in our lives. Our Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you this morning, not in our names, O oh God. We do not have any merit. 
to make us stand in your holy presence, our God. But our Father, we come in the name of Jesus, our Lord and our Savior, who died for us this morning. And Lord, we want to thank you. We want to bless your holy name, Father, because of sending Jesus for us. We thank you, Father, for loving us this much that you sent Jesus for us. It is on his account that, Lord, we are standing in your holy presence. It is on his account that, Father, we are accepted of you, dear Lord. It is on his account that, Father, we are, we have your favor this morning. And we want to lift your name, Lord Jesus. We glorify your holy name. We lift up your holy name, our Lord. We thank you, Jesus, because of your love, because of your goodness, because of your mercies upon our lives. Thank you because you love us so much. And this morning, you know what we are going through. Lord, this morning, you understand what we are going through. We may not be able to tell others or even to make other people understand what we are going through. And at times we don't even have words, proper words, to say what we are going through. But Jesus, you understand everything that we are going through this morning. You know what we are going through this morning, our Lord. You do not only sympathize with us, our Father. You are able to help us in our troubles. You are able to help us in our struggles this morning. You are able to lift us from mighty box, oh God. You are able to lift us from peace of desperation this morning. You are able to renew our hope this morning, oh God. You are able to encourage us once again, dear Lord. Your word says that, that those who trust in the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall soar on with wings like eagles. They shall walk and not faint. They shall run and not grow weary. This is what we pray. This is what we ask of this morning. That it will be our portion. It will be our part. It will be our inheritance. Lord, we pray that you may come through for us in the name of Jesus. Come through for us, everlasting Father. Meet at the very point of our needs, O oh Lord. Even what the doctors are not able to do. Do it for us, our Lord and our Savior. Even what our family members are not able to do for us. Come through for us this morning, our God. Even what our friends are not able to do for us. Come through for us, our Lord and our Savior. We thank you and we give you praise. We glorify your holy name, our Father. We adore you, Jesus. We adore you, Jesus. We worship your holy name. We proclaim your greatness. We proclaim your power. We worship you, dear Lord. We bless your holy name. Thank you, Lord, that you are touching your people this morning. Thank you, Lord, that you are coming through for them. Some of them could be at the verge of despair. But Lord, you are working in their hearts, reviving them again, renewing their hopes. Lord, you are strengthening your people once again. We give you praise, we give you glory, because your word says that you change is not. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And what you did in the past, you can do in the present. Lord Jesus, we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Shall we uh, clap for the Lord in Jesus' name? And you could have come to the house of the Lord this morning and you are saying, I desire the church to pray with me because of what I'm going through. I request that you take a step of faith by lifting up your hand because Jesus honors faith. He honors faith. And we will take these needs to Jesus by faith. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are in our midst this hour. And Lord, you know what your people are going through. Lord, you can see the hands that have been lifted before you as a sign of faith in your word, O oh God. And I am praying that, Father, you may meet at the very point of your people's needs in Jesus' mighty name. Send your hand, O oh Lord, and heal them from every disease and ailment in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray that, Father, you may come through for them, that you may encourage the discouraged, that you may lift them that are low in the spirit in Jesus' name. That, Father, you may provide for them that are broke, that are in want in the name of Jesus. That you may command doors of blessings to open from before them in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless your people this morning. Glorify Jesus in our midst, Holy Spirit. 
Glorify Jesus in our midst. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Meet your people at the very point of their needs in Jesus' name. We are praying for them that are worshipping with us online. Some of them could be aching, ailing, wherever they are. And Lord Jesus, we are praying that you may stretch forth your loving, kind, gentle, merciful hand. And touch them wherever they are. And come through for them in the name of Jesus. I speak a blessing upon the entire church. And this I pray, trusting and believing in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we clap for the Lord again? In the name of Jesus, I request that we take our seats. And before we partake of the Lord's Supper, I want to read again the words that we read in, in, in the book of Hebrews 4, 14 and 16. The Bible says, Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. But we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet was without sin. Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. Jesus is our high priest who always lives to intercede for us. And I pray that as we come to partake, from the Lord's table that this morning we will receive mercy and that we will find the grace to help us in our time of need. We also remember Jesus and what he has accomplished for us and this helps us to live a life full of gratitude to him and living a life of worship to him because of what he has done for us. We remember also that Jesus is coming back to take us where he is. And this helps us to keep our hearts ready for his coming. And so I'm going to pray for the elements. And then I will invite the church to come and partake in Jesus' name. Only those who have a relationship with Jesus are allowed to partake of his table. shall we pray. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of your great love for us. Thank you even for this opportunity to partake of your table. And Father, even as we come to partake, I am praying that your people will leave this table full of mercies from God and full of grace to help them in their times of need. We receive this bread and the cup with, great, with greatness and with, with gladness in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome, church. I welcome the prison worship to lead us in a worship song as the church comes to partake. Stay, he was his right as well. 
before the Father complete, it will be because you paid the debt of our sins. And for this, Lord, we give you all the glory. We worship you, Father, even for giving us the opportunity to partake of the Lord's table. Father, I pray that every blessing that accompany the Holy Communion may be our portion this morning. I speak a blessing to us all in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Shall we praise the Lord again with a clap? In Jesus' mighty name. And this time I want to welcome us to worship the Lord with our giving. Let us bring our tithes, offering, and other givings to the Lord as a sign of worship, telling the Lord that we know whatever we have has come from Him. And so we are worshiping Him with our money. We have three ways of giving we have the pay bill and the MPSA number as shown on the screen. And today is the third Sunday. We are also giving for the missions. We have the two boxes there, one for the offering, the other one for the mission. So we are reminded to give generously to God's work because he also loves us and gives us generously. So let's pray as we come to worship the Lord with our money. Our Father in Jesus' name, we thank you for the opportunity to worship you through giving what you've given unto us. And we want to tell you, Father, we love you. We can never thank you enough. We're just giving a token, a small thing to tell you that, Father, we appreciate you. And we know that it is by your grace we have come this far. Thank you for the praise and worship team. I want to commit them into your hand and even to speak a blessing upon them. Thank you, Father, for the many times you've continued to use them to be a blessing to this church. I speak a blessing upon them in the name of Jesus. We pray that, Lord, you may be with us this session. In the name of Jesus, we pray and believe. Amen. Karibun, praise the Lord.
can stand secure Carve upon my heart Be it unto me According to your word According to your promises 